Are you tired of being overcharged and forced into paying a monthly subscription for your Mac and Windows software? Well, if you are, currently we're having a 50% off discount on all the latest Mac and Windows software, such as AutoCAD, SolidWorks, Photoshop, Microsoft Office, and much more. Our 50% off discount will be ending soon, so be sure to text us, ready to buy, to 323-405-1341. That's 323-405-1341. We aim to please, so expect 24-7 technical support, the latest premium software, instant software links delivered to your email, and PayPal Buyer's Protection Guarantee. I refuse to feel like um, like the devil's going to win. You know oh, what I mean? Yeah. I refuse yeah. to feel like um, lies will triumph over truth. Like, like, and this is why I'm always on the side of truth. I always feel like, you know, as bad as it, as it looks out there, especially in the times we live in it now, as far as how they're attacking, you know, free speech and they're just really trying to you know railroad people into taking you know certain uh <laughs> things in their body and you know in all kinds of ways um it, i think it gets overwhelming sometimes in certain people's minds like damn can we even even defeat all of this like can we really be free from all of this because we're definitely at a point where, you know, even morally, like a lot of things they want us to accept, we don't accept that as black people. Right. You know what I mean? Like a lot of things that they want to normalize right now. And I think you don't know what I'm talking about. Mm. Um, it's like, that's not normal to us and it's never going to be normal. You're right. not going to force us to go along with this. Like, if you want to do that, that's fine, but I'm not going to be forced to play along with this. Right. But at some point, I feel like we're going to have to part ways at some point. Like, you, you do you, we're going to have to do us. Right. Because 100%. morally, morally, we don't jive. Right. And you asked the question about Ghana. Come back to Ghana for a moment. The one beautiful thing I loved about Ghana is the retention of the indigenous cultural institutions. Mm. I mean, I know if I have, let me tell you, and be straight up, straight ahead, right? If stuff ain't looking too good in my life, I pick up a phone and I call Ghana. You may not want to believe in juju or voodoo, but I know voodoo works. Mm. It's the science of the universe. They're masters that know how to manipulate it. I'm not one of those masters, but I know how to call Haji. Okay, I said, look at things are going like this and I need things to go like this. What do the ancestors have to say? You know, um, how can they help me get through this? They're, we have all kinds of institutions that they never destroyed. They're still there, they still work. You can go to any community, almost any month of the year, there's a festival, the Yam Festival, the River Festival, the, the Mother Festival, and thousands upon thousands of our people come from all around the country to celebrate. Now we don't see these festivals on TV or on, the, on you know on the news, but we still do all these things. All right, you can still go to a village and see a way of life in terms of ethics, morals, and values that you can only imagine from ten thousand years ago, but it still exists as the mind of the people. Mm. Now the West is there trying to corrupt that. But even where we go, because you can miss the picture if you're not looking straight. Like Dr. King always say, you got to get the language right. But you also got to get the image right. See? And so when you look at Ghana, for instance, and you first come and say, oh, all these people are Christians. They got all these churches and stuff. That's for Sunday. Mm. But there's Shrine Day the other six days of the week. Mm. They follow the other gods the other six days of the week. Fishermen don't fish on Tuesday because the god of the sea needs rest. Mm. That's real. Mm. Okay, how supposed to have it? You get caught out there fishing, you're going to be in trouble because you're disturbing God. You understand? So they use the westernization of an African institution called Christianity. We need to take that back from them too. Mm. You know, they use it 
the way we used it in the 1900s and early 20th century to our advantage. But they never gave up the indigenous institutions. So that supported I go, those things. And, and absolutely. If you were hanging out, here, I'd take you to places you'd be thinking, small, why you got me walking on air, man? I put got to be on the ground. But I'm going to take you to Nana and catch you. And when he sits on the stool to give you your official naming, and the queen mothers wash your head with the sacred bush, and they feed you the sacred meal, mm. you know, on those three rounds, so you can become a member of a family in that community. And then Nana will tell you, when I'm sitting here having a glass of apatashi, that's their bootleg, which is ooh, sweet, brother. You got to try this, right? Uh. The, the, the community name for it is Kill Me Quick. <laughs> but he will let you know that I, when I'm sitting out here with you and be talking as brothers, I'm Nana so and so. But when I'm sitting on this throne, I'm the ancestors. And it is as real as real can get. And so you, you can see that this is still intact. Yet there's a contemporary world because we can't live in the past. We have to evolve the past into a future and bring the best of the past into that future with us. And that's what Happy is talking about when we are taught on the fourth, that's what we'll be discussing. That's what Happy's fundamental principles are. How do we learn from the past to build the future? Well, that kind of goes into the question that this uh, brother Charlie here, who uh, just donated, thank you for your donation, Charlie. He said, where do you see the black man in 10 to 20 years? And you know what? I'm I'm sorry, Lord Jamar. Can I just add something before you? Um, Absolutely. Before you ask. So you know, it's interesting when you know we're listening. We're sitting here. We're listening to Professor Small talk, right? And part of the impetus for us doing this event was that we too feel like you when you know when you're we're looking at all the the woes of what's going on in in our community. It's like where do we get started? So where we get started is is with us. Right. So how can we at Hoppy facilitate that with us piece? And a lot of things that, you know, and I've sat down with goo gobs of interviews with Professor Small, seeing goo gobs of interviews on YouTube with Professor Small and know him personally and always hear something new that I've never heard before. Mm. But what it does is this history piece that knowing really our history, OK, from elders who are not who are elders and not just old people, okay, mm -hmm. and who are really the carrier of information is what helps us to decide who we are. And it helps us, once we start to decide who we are, we're, you know, we're taking these pieces in, then it, it starts to formulate the way that we act, right? And so once we start to formulate the way that we act and how we portray our culture, that's how we start to move people forward. We can't, what's happening is that there's a bunch of people trying to move our culture forward that have no connection of who they are. Mm. So that's why they do dumbass things, right? Or they do things that are just not, it seems like it's taking us steps back because they just don't know who they are. So this event is really, you know, yes, we will have black excellence there. We'll have you there. We have all these examples of people who have decided, consciously decided to take their history, take who they know of who they are and to broadcast it in a way because it's really about modeling that so that people that are coming to view this, you know, or be a part of this, because it's really a community event, right? So people who are, you know, it's, it's for them to get, get examples of this so they can start do it for themselves, you know, because all of us are black excellence. Dr. Oba Tashaka, um, he's a, a wonderful, one of my professors, uh, small, you know, really uh, good friend. <laughs> um, but he, way back. Yeah, from way back, like years and years ago. But he talked about <laughs> the whole idea of um, like our black genius is our creativity, right? You know, and part of this, you know, um, is showing our creativity in all these forms, art, poetry, film, you know, it's, it's to get us back to who we are because we got work to do and we can't do the work if we are. Let, let me drop one back, on you, you know. Alicia, right here, right? Uh -oh. Because Western media is our fundamental enemy. Right? Mm -hmm. How many of you know who Dan Gotti is? Never heard of the gentleman. I'm going to Google all these names. Okay, the, I got richest, the richest, the real richest man in the world, and he's Nigerian. Mm. No, step further. Let me just read this to you. Thank you, Devin McCrory. Dan Gotti, all refinery, 
refinery has finally been completed and will be commissioned by the president of Nigeria on the 24th of this month, January. Then go to 10 facts about the Dangote refinery. Dangote Oil and Petrochemical Refinery is 650,000 BPP oil refinery, meaning they can produce, there's only a couple of oil refineries in the world that will be able to outproduce this African refinery. This is owned 100% by Africa. Mm. Nobody's talking about it. It is the largest single train oil refinery on the planet Earth, the largest in Africa, and the seventh largest oil refinery in the world. It is capable of meeting the energy demands of both Nigeria and the entire continent of Africa. It's about to open, but nobody's talking about it here in the West. Dangote announced he would want to build a refinery in 2013 is when he started the project. And at that time, it cost $9 billion. It wasn't until 2016 that construction began. The refinery was originally meant to be built in the oil-producing state of Ondo. You know, that's one of the river states. But they had to change the location. But they got it done. It's finished. Yes, and every oil field in Africa can now redirect. Instead of sending their oil to England or America or Saudi Arabia to be refined, it can be refined right there on the continent, which is going to save them tons of money Mm. Mm, and guess what it's going to bring in over three hundred thousand jobs across the spectrum so many of our young people are leaving home dying in the the mediterranean trying to go find jobs in europe coming across the border in mexico trying to find jobs here well this is one of the industries that's going to help them find jobs there and this is just one industry before president um Oh, God, beautiful brother. In Tanzania died. He forced the British to pay him reparations for the Tanzanian people to the tone of billions of dollars for them misappropriating the gold processing. And so now all Tanzanian gold is processed in Tanzania. Mm. And he took that money he got from the reparation to build schools, bridges, uh, highways, and hospitals. Nobody talks about that in the West. So the brother asked, where are we going to be 20 years from now? We're going to be closer to where our goals say we should be because we're going to look around the continent and we're going to see all these things happening that we're not paying attention to. But we need to pay attention to and we need to get closer to our people, our brothers and sisters on the continent and learn to put these historical differences behind us through understanding our history. Because if your uncle is left in Africa, and your cousin is left in Africa, and your sister is left in Africa, and you got thrown on the slave ship, Well, that's your family over there. That's your home. That's your house. So over the years, we've lost an understanding of one another through the westernization of both of our minds. Well, our job is to now Africanize that mind and reconstruct, as we deconstruct the whiteism, reconstruct the blackism mm. of our minds. Yes, reconstruct. And, that, that, and, it's, and it's happening as we speak. Right. The young people in Africa, their foot is just like over here. This, your generation, my young brother, is one of the greatest generations we ever produced. People talk about, yeah, some stuff that happened with hip hop was negative shit. Some stuff that happened with, with, with the Baptist music, the spiritual was negative. You know what I'm saying? Right. You, 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 had, you didn't hear the kind of records I listened to in, in the 60s. We call it records to grind on and to grind for. All right. right? <laughs> we just were a little more subtle with it. Uh-huh. It was about love and respect and stuff. And we were more in control of the lyrics then than we are now. And in, in, at the end of the table, even though we are writing more lyrics now than we did back then. So as we move to take control of more distribution of an of a, of a, uh, information form, and music is an information form. It is one of the best and most powerful in the world. And our young people are taking more control of it every day. I had a thing with Curtis Bow and about 200 rappers about a month ago. They talking big time about pulling together union, making stuff work and do it right. Now it's going to take a minute, and they're going to have to sharpen it up. And I think I'm going to do something with him again soon, on the 1st of February. Mm. doing some stuff and so i have all faith that when i'm laying with the ancestors in my dust you and your grandkids gonna be kicking stuff in the butt and in 20 years we're gonna move faster in the next 20 years than we've done in the last 80 years 
we got the technology, we got the skill, and I see in our people that we got the will in our young people. So I'm not at all worried about it. The lie is not going to win. The thief is not going to get away. You understand? Okay. 